I went to Legoland and Disneyland. I can't believe you didn't invite me. Well, it would have been a little weird to carry a mannequin around for three days. What's a mannequin? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. Hi there, I'm Josh. This is Josh Build Stuff, and you may notice the bags under my eyes. Maybe I'm tired, or maybe I just got back from a trip to California, a trip I'd love to tell you about right now. Strap in, because this trip was full of drama, tears, tears, fears, and airfares. This video isn't specifically about Lego, but it did involve Lego stores and lands, so it's relevant enough for me. To summarize, before I've actually said anything, I went and met up with some internet friends in California, which I wouldn't always recommend doing. Any one of us could have been a psychopath, myself included. Also, California is periodically on fire, but it seemed to be okay while I was there. In the end, we all got out of this trip relatively happy and healthy. Now, I don't really vlog but I did take plenty of pictures and videos that I will intercut while I regale you of a tale of a, a, of a good time. I had the privilege to hang out with some folks that you might know from the LEGO community. People like Claire, Shy, and Ninja from the Cali Brick Click podcast and, of course, from their own content. People like Michael from MKM Brick who collects LEGO like no other and makes content like someone who doesn't actually make very much content, though he promises he's going to. And, of course, everyone knows the incomparable, incomprehensible Sam who I'm sure you've seen on YouTube or on the beach. Uh, and I'll answer this question preemptively. Yes, he was as much fun to hang out with in person as it appears he would be from his internet antics. Now that brings me to my next point. If there are people on the internet that you admire and follow from afar and you think it would be fun to admire and follow them from a close, just go for it. Just show up at their home or place of work and hang out with them for a three day weekend and just like act like you've been buddies forever and ever. No, that sounds creepy, and what I did tagging along on this trip was only a little bit creepy, but I've been talking to these fine folks for a long time. We coordinated and planned this whole trip ahead of time, so, I mean, don't go chasing after internet people in real life, please. It was a fun coincidence, though, that my podcast episode of the Cali Brick Click happened to come out the exact weekend that I was hanging out with some of the people from that very podcast in person. So if you haven't gone and listened to that already or watched it on YouTube, go do so now. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Anyway, on to the actual trip report. I flew to California from Austin on Friday. I know it's not the best time to travel, but this trip seemed like it would be worth it. And in the end, I think it was. On Friday, we met up at downtown Disney near Disneyland, did some shopping, hung out at the Lego store, which is honestly where we spent most of our time. It's a pretty cool Lego store there. Pretty good size as well. They also have the design a minifigure experience there, which we did, and I would recommend doing that if any store that you're visiting has that. You do need a reservation ahead of time. So that was pretty fun. Uh, we got some burgers, did some shopping, walked around a bit, and it was great. Disney had their fall decor up, which is always lovely. In the evenings, it was like upper 60s for you Fahrenheit folks. For you Celsius folks, that is perfect sweater weather and the perfect opportunity to break out your fine fall fashion collection, though I was uh, admittedly underdressed because I'm from Texas. On Saturday, we traded Shy and Ninja for JB and headed a little south of Anaheim to Legoland, stopping, of course, to admire the beauty of the Pacific Ocean and take a leak at a uh, roadside rest stop. Legoland was kind of the impetus of this whole trip, and specifically the Lego Video Llama was kind of the impetus of this whole trip. You might know people like Sans like to collect rare, weird, and different Lego things. And what's rarer, weirder, and more different than getting a signature from the Lego DJ Llama from a very polarizing Lego theme? And with, so this was one of the like few tour dates that the Llama had. He was going to be in Legoland, California, so we were going there kind of with a mission. I was going there kind of as a spectator because the whole situation seemed like it would be pretty entertaining to experience. And indeed, it was. There was actually a lot more drama associated with this llama than we expected there to be. I did get a signature from this llama thing, man, minifigure, whatever you want to call him. I got a signature from him. It's right here on the back of his little video plate thing. But uh, the drama part is not exactly my story to tell. But keep an eye on Claire and Sans's channels because it's a story worth telling. And I'm looking forward to reliving it through their content. But even with our already very low expectations somehow subverted and brought even lower, I think the Lego Land leg of our journey was still relatively successful. We had fun, wandered around. I love seeing 
all the cool stuff that Lego Land has to offer, specifically Mini Land. But personally, I'm just, I'm a big fan of miniatures in all senses, pinchers and schnauzers included. I did buy a bunch of stuff from the Lego Land Lego store because they have some stuff that I haven't seen in other stores, but I think I'll share all that in a separate video because this one's already feeling longer than it should be. Sunday was a bonus day of the trip for me, and honestly, it was a dream of an afterthought because I figured I was flying in so close to Anaheim, I might as well spend a day at the happiest place on earth. I'm talking, of course, of Disneyland. I've been dreaming of going to Disneyland for, well, my entire life because I was born and raised in Florida. I spent a lot of time at Disney World, but I have never been to the OG, the Mecca, the original Disney park that is, of course, Disneyland. So I was very much looking forward to it. I knew I couldn't experience everything in just one day, but I'll tell you what, spending 15 hours in a park, that is enough time to absorb a whole lot of Disney atmosphere. And I'll say that my Disney cup right now definitely overfloweth. And yes, literally we spent 15 hours in the park. We were there open to close, baby. I'm not gonna try to comment on everything that we saw, ate, rode, or experienced while there, but I'm also not going to say nothing about all of those things either. Personally, I was mostly interested in the experiences that Disneyland has that Disney World doesn't, or the experiences that both parks have that I could then tediously compare and contrast and then reveal my findings to the ever-interested Sans, uh, who that boy, you cannot tear him away from a classic Disney dark ride. I was like, let's go see the Star Wars stuff. I think you'll you'll like that part of the park. No, it was it was just the opposite. But we did do a lot of those classic Disney rides and I did I enjoyed each one more than the next and each one a little less than Rise of the Resistance. But it is fun to see the innovation and how far Imagineering has come from like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride to, you know, Rise of the Resistance. That Sands man, that boy is a character and a bundle of energy. We practically had to leash him, but we were kind of afraid of what that might awaken. But honestly, yeah, I, th I think he had a sufficiently good time, was well tired out by the end of the day, and he got to, you know, pilot the Millennium Falcon. So what else could any Star Wars fan really ask for? Some other quick Disneyland thoughts. Their version of Pirates of the Caribbean is much better than Florida's. Florida's Jungle Cruise, I think, is better, but both of them have the cool new additions. Those were fun to see. Indiana Jones was awesome, but it was missing, like, some of the effects, which was a little bit of a bummer. Ronto Raps, Rise of the Resistance, Smuggler's Run, and Ogus Cantina are all as awesome. Those are all the Star Wars things in Galaxy's Edge. Those are all as awesome as I remember them being from Florida. Blue Milk is also better than Green Milk, but honestly, neither of them are really that great. Disneyland's Mountain of Space is better than Florida's. Better ride vehicles. You don't get shaken around quite as much. The Haunted Mansion had the holiday overlay on it, the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay, which was kind of a bummer, a little weird. I wanted to experience the classic, but I am, ex I am glad that I got to experience that version in the end. Plus, the organ at Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, that's the same organ that was used in the 1954 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea movie that was made by Disney. So, honestly, that was most of the reason for my trip, besides the llama, was to see the organ from that movie. The Matterhorn is awesome at night, but hurts at always. That ride really shakes you around. Both Buzz Lightyears are fine. Star Tours is the same everywhere. Nemo Submarine Voyage was unfortunately down for maintenance, which almost made me cancel the trip, but that ride is based on a fish named Nemo and not a captain named Nemo, so I was willing to overlook that, but that was a pretty big disappointment after, again, the llama drama that I talked about earlier. The classic Disney dark rides were actually pretty high on my list of things I wanted to experience. You know, Pinocchio, Snow White, Alice in Wonderland, Winnie the Pooh, a few others here and there. Those are just classic quintessential like opening day Disneyland and so I was very glad that we got to ride those in the end. The food was amazing. Bronto wraps, mint juleps, and beignets in New Orleans Square. I just, for some reason, I wasn't picturing a mint julep tasting quite so minty, which I don't really like, but I guess that's kind of on me in the end. We had turkey legs, churros, dole whips, popcorn, and monster energy drinks on Main Street in front of the castle, which reminds me of my childhood, which if that actually might answer a lot of questions about why I turned out the way that I did. Ultimately, I feel like we did Disneyland right. Just the right amount of planning with just the right amount of improvisation to keep things fresh and yet highly regimented. And it was it was a fun, surreal experience for someone like me who spent so much time in Florida and the Florida parks that coming here was like something entirely new and yet it still felt so familiar. And honestly, that's probably a good metaphor for this entire trip and the friendships that I got to make along the way because the people that I was hanging out with are pretty new friends to me and yet it felt like we'd been friends for 
all of time. So to my new friends, Claire, you're awesome to hang out with in person, but be careful with that uh, Disney pin buying budget. You gotta save some money for Lego tech. You weren't even there, but we talked and thought of you often, and you've got some Disney gifts waiting for you when you finally come to visit. Shy, thank you for being as cool in person as you appear on camera. Thank you for your service, and thank you most of all for that military discount at the burger place. JB, you actually have a pretty nice singing voice. Don't hide that light under a bushel, my friend. You've got to let it shine. Also, cool first name, Ninja. I still have no idea what you look like, and I have literally seen you in person, so that is dedication, my friend. Michael, keep on buying that Lego, but make some videos about it so that we can all experience that joy of buying Lego right along with you. And Sans, you were there also. So to summarize, after actually having said something this time, good friends and good memories are priceless. Or in my case, they cost quite a lot between airfare and hotel and park tickets and car rentals and Uber fees and Uber cleanup fees after you spill your drink in the Uber. But ultimately, I think the time, effort, and money was worth it for a rather nice weekend. So thank you, friends, for inviting me along that journey with you. And thank you to you all for coming on this little journey with me. I hope you had as good a time reliving these memories as I did making them. As always, thanks so much for watching. I am going to go take a nap because I'm still very tired. I'll see you next time. This is like a weird heartfelt, this whole video had like a weird tone to it, but I guess we're going with it. I guess we're going with it.